Can you hear that? Yeah. You know, when it's like, like the snow, but very hard, small. Hail. The Bayerischer Rundfunk. Okay. <laughs> I can't say that. You did that video recently, which was making tape loops with a saw, with you <laughs> holding an actual proper DIY store, saw, and then <laughs> yes. sawing up a cas at the with the saw. You might think that somebody's sawing tape, but you're actually sawing a cassette, the plastic thing. And partly that's it becomes a really interesting musical experiment, obviously. But also it's the thing that just looks great in a video, isn't it? So are you, are you aware of sort of deliberately doing both? So on the one hand, it's an interesting thing to do musically. And at the same time, it's just, it's like really good video content, isn't it? So there's something about that I think. Did you have that thought that like, oh, this will look good. I don't want a good, I want a, yeah. a saw. <laughs> Absolutely. I, uh. Yeah, I think it was something that I would have liked to see in a video, yeah. how somebody does it. And I didn't find it. So I thought yeah. I'll just do it myself, but it was really, I was a bit angry. It was the first time I ever used a saw <laughs> and then on camera and, and uh, yeah, that, that was very <laughs> experimental and DIY and very, uh, yeah, I'm very happy. I have both my hands still. And yeah, that, that's good. You need those. <laughs> uh hello viewers welcome to a, another video where we talk to some amazing creative person um i'm here today with panic girl aka martha hello hello could you just say a little bit about who you are and what you do for the sake of people who may not have met you before yeah sure so i'm i'm panic girl aka martha Barr. i'm an artist um and professional composer from munich germany and I'm um, doing music now for a very, very long time, for many years now. And at the moment, I am doing music as Panic Girl. It's um, electronic music, experimental music. And then I'm also working at the public radio station here in Munich as a composer. And also, I'm also writing articles on gear, where I get sent sometimes nice little devices and can test them uh, and then write articles on them. So that's that's amazing too. So everything has to do with music in my life. Of course. <laughs> cool. Do you get to keep the devices? Mostly not. Mostly Sometimes not. yes, but mostly not. But I, I can test them for a while. So that's cool too. So so I really know for because sometimes I'm really uh, amazed by a device and I'm pretty sure I want to have it and buy it afterwards, and then I get to test it, and then I'll, I'll just um, see, okay, it doesn't really fit my workflow. So mm. that's very good to know then, too. Handy, yeah. Um, I'm David Gauntlet from Ryzen University, where I run the Creativity Everything Lab. Um, I'm just saying that. And I came across you, Panic Girl. I think of you as Panic Girl. I can't really call you Martha. That, that's not your name. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> At some point on the internet, as we do. Um, and you, you have a great Instagram account, which is always really beautiful visuals of you doing different things. And obviously, I think it was that that got me listening to your music. And your music's amazing. Um, Thank you. you. You're on YouTube. You had an album that came out just less than two weeks ago, your most recent album called Blue, to go with your hair. <laughs> it's nothing got to do, nothing to do with like sadness or being being blue or something like that. It's only my hair and, and me loving blue, the color. Uh -huh. But it's an amazing album. I was, I've been enjoying it. I, enjoy, I played it several times last night and it gets better, like the more, I oh, mean, I you. loved it. And then it's got real sort of depth and richness so you can appreciate new things in it. So that was really cool. And making those, because you make very beautiful Instagram posts where you have to, you're doing the top down thing, looking down on flat lace, yes. Things, and you put little objects and all of that. That takes a lot of work, doesn't it? Yes, <laughs> it does. But it really, because it's, especially for me, because I'm really coming from the audio side of things and, um, I was thinking about what is Instagram about. I wanted to, I don't know, get more followers, um, get connected more. And then I, it 
got me thinking what is Instagram mostly about? And it, it is about the visuals, I guess. It is, um, yeah, you have the photo or the video first and then a little, little bit of text. And yeah, then the idea came to me, how could I stand out a bit? And I really liked the look of those flat lays, really clean, minimal, mostly um, well arranged. And yeah, then I bought those um, background papers in different uh -huh. colors and started playing around with it and collecting things from everywhere, stealing from my husband, from my kid, from, <laughs> yeah. from the kitchen. I don't know, wherever I found cool little items which I could combine with maybe an instrument or, yeah, mostly instruments um, like the Coco Quantas. Coco Quantas, the wooden, yeah. the wooden instrument, it's so beautiful in its own. And then just seeing what fits with the color of it, um, how could one arrange it with some cables maybe, and then, yeah, taking photos, which light is best. I have no idea of those things, I have to admit. And um, then I... Yeah, read about it. What what is the best light? What should I buy maybe or do? And then the natural light is most people say the natural light is the um, easiest to work with and the most beautiful. And then I always put it in front of the window and yeah, took the photos <laughs> and tried around with it. And yeah, I really, really like it. It's yeah yeah very self-taught but still i don't know I, I even someone approached me about a month ago and asked if he could take one of those photos and publish it in in his upcoming book that was just what my photos yeah. okay <laughs> yeah sure no they're <laughs> really beautiful. mind blowing yeah so i was asking about how blue was going um i guess you probably completed making it quite some time ago is that right and now you have to go into a kind of promotion cycle where you have to remember about it again and talk about it you've probably done other things since then is that right that's right that's right yeah it's it's usually I think when the when you finish the tracks as an artist maybe the uh, so the mixing side the com of, of course the compositions then the mixing side of things and then you get it um, you leave it out of your hands give it to the mastering engineer and then of course also yeah the whole planning behind it you would like to have vinyl getting it to the distribution and in my case um i wanted to have vinyl for sure like a beautiful blue turquoise um vinyl. I <laughs> oh thank you <laughs> <laughs> and um in my case it was a little bit um unfortunate because the distrib the, the production company the vinyl production company had to reduce employees because of COVID. So only, I don't know, two or three people at the same time could work there. So that would slow down production quite a bit. And then they also had a COVID case during the product. That's why it got delayed now for two weeks. I hope it will arrive um, in the next few days. So yeah, because of that, I, I actually wanted to release it um, around Christmas already, but yeah, now it got delayed oh. <laughs> by five months now. Wow, yeah, but yeah, that's I think that's the case for many artists at the moment. Yeah, yeah so I worked uh, yeah. on my next album already. So <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, do you have an idea for that next album? Do you start off with an idea of what the whole thing could be, or do you? sort of make a track and make a track and make a track and try to see what's going to work together. Uh, usually I do it the, the second way you described. Ah. So, so I will I'll, we'll just make tracks, track by track, um, and then see what fits together. But in this case, I have like a theme that is based around um, the sea and memories because my, my father died in December yeah and uh yeah it's some some sort of how do you say to remember him yeah because at that time i really felt like i i don't know how can i make music now it is it, it feels so irrelevant and then um it occurred to me i could make some tracks uh remembering him mm. and he he loved the sea he loved sailing he was sailing very often he loved blue 
So that's very nice too for me. Um, and yeah, this the tracks I have already are very delicate, are very a bit more melancholic than my usual stuff. I have a ukulele now right. that I try to record as good as I can because I didn't practice for years, but um, yeah, I could can edit a little bit around <laughs> ah. with Ableton. And yeah, so I tried to make this like a theme for the next thing. And yeah, see, nice. see how that goes. Yeah, I'm sorry about the circumstances, but it sounds like a, a lovely concept. Yeah, I hope it I hope it works. I have already like five um almost finished tracks so and i like, really like the it's because it's not um the vibe is not like you're listening to it and you have to cry immediately i wouldn't like to do tracks like that but more like um i don't know light light melancholic oh. so <laughs> we'll see how that goes <laughs> oh that sounds like a genre you've got a new genre there <laughs> maybe uh, to go back to product, because we were talking about the vinyl and that, um, you seem to have a good eye for doing stuff. You've got your stickers. You've got the <laughs> the artwork for Blue. Uh, and then I guess, did you ask the artist that did that to also sort of do parts of it as stickers? Stickers is cool, of course. Is that right? Stickers are so cool. I, I love stickers. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. And, mm, um yeah somehow so i really am lucky with the artist who did the illustration i think it's very beautiful and uh the colors are very yeah very beautiful and the little eurorex system in the cover and the little coco quantas and the op1 and and so on and um i didn't know this beforehand but when she finished the cover she also sent me the PSD file with uh, all the single elements. That was uh, so cool. I, I never had that before. I usually got the finished cover as yeah. a, in different file formats, but not with the single details for me to use afterwards. So in this case, um, she sent me that. And then I made the stickers with right. some help from other people because I am not good at all this ve like vector and I don't know, you know, editing stuff yeah uh, cool, cool stickers <laughs> yeah they're really really nice and i also have lo like those badges yes so nice to do the merch <laughs> yeah it's fun it's fun and, and people seem to enjoy it it was also very cool with the last release where i had for example those um patch cable bags mm. um with the modular synth on it they're also almost sold out or the vinyl how is it called in english what you put beneath the vinyl all right matt vinyl matt yeah yeah exactly and i had like um dark gray mats with also the the modular on it there right. i only have one left too so that's really cool and they're really really nice so um i also um i always want to really make it a very good product and not only you know like cheap stuff that I can sell or something like that yeah. really has to be very nice quality. Very nice. Cool. Um, um, when, how do you start a track basically? Is it, does it always, I have, my guess would be with you from what I've seen on YouTube and stuff, does it basically begin with some sound that intrigues you? Is Absolutely. That <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and um, I need a sound that really, catches me somehow and then it mostly just flows yeah uh-huh you sort of build out add things yeah exactly I, I i very much like to start with my modular as a starting sound just experimenting what is just seeing what what could happen happen with this instrument because um i really like um because after several years of composing there's some kind of muscle memory. Mm -hmm. One tends to do the same things, the same tricks, the same sounds. And with modular, um, there are some modules which surprise me still. So um, melody wise and also sound wise. <clears throat> and that's why I like to start with that. So I really get surprised and a little bit out of my habits through this instrument. 
And yeah, when I then when I have a sound, then I start layering and then also going to different um, instruments or into the DAW or whatever, ukulele. Yeah. <laughs> whatever comes to mind. Yeah. There's going to be a riot from your electronic fans with this ukulele coming in. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, and you seem to do everything very much all yourself. Is that right? Um, I mean, I, for me, I always just, I just like doing everything myself. I don't know why. Uh, and I'm not so good at collaborating. Are you very much like you want to do it all? Is that? With Panic Girl, yes, I think so. Because I think because I'm, as I'm also working as a professional composer and then have to collaborate, which yeah. I also like very much. But then I really like with Panic Girl just to do what only I like with the music. So, um, so it's very, very much me, what I like to do, what I'm feeling in that moment, how my mood is. And um, so I don't have to compromise in that thing i also have projects <clears throat> for example with uh, anatole locker as lucid grain yeah, and yeah. that's very much very that's very different it's i really enjoy that because we usually meet especially with the first album that was really crazy for me because i'm not so good with improvisations i would uh -huh. say but with him we met we both had our, our modular cases um prepared but we didn't tell the other one what we had prepared so the other one didn't know what um, melodies what um, tempo nothing mm -hmm. and then we just met listened to it adjusted those um, essential things and then started jamming and that's how the first album came about and i still love the love the vibe and i'm still amazed that it worked <laughs> actually <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's really nice. Um, and that works because you have a kind of a meeting of minds. You've sort of got shared ideas about, do you, have, do you think you have similar tastes or do you have quite different tastes, but somehow it works? Or Good question. I think we have similar tastes, uh, definitely. And um, yes, it's very, maybe it's also um, because I uh, usually like to, play around with the melodies more, for example. And Anatole likes very much playing with more the noisy stuff um, wow. of things and likes um, speech samples from the radio or podcast or whatever. And then he uh, loads it into the morphogene, for example, and mangles them and so on. So it was naturally like what we both did didn't get too much into the way. And it was quite I don't know, without speaking about it, pretty clear what roles we had, though we also changed them sometimes. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes it works with people, sometimes don't. It's yeah. somehow also chemistry. Anatole also said it's like dancing. Don't, uh, how do you say, don't step on the toes of the yeah. other. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, um, yeah, yeah. and it works. That's a good collaboration metaphor as well. The dancing, but not stepping on. So you need dancing very much about being in sync, but also not stepping on toes. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, and you seem to be very much of the DIY ethos. So instead of trying to sign to a label, for example, you've created your own label. That's very cool. Yeah, yeah. I did Do you want that. to talk I... a little bit about your label? Yeah, sure. Uh, I had also uh, releases on other labels yeah but this with this one um it's called iue records it, ca it came about about a year ago i think and um let's say that way i'm i'm in the modular and synthesizer scene for quite a while now for several years now and i really enjoy it they have such i don't know it's a very open-minded scene very welcoming and um really love it there but I somehow I realized that on some compilations there were, were mostly male composers or on some labels many men released there and um, maybe it was because 
I'm a woman and then I looked for other female composers more maybe or more focused on other female composers because I'm very curious what other women are doing yeah. in that area. And so I know very many, 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 many fantastic, compo really fantastic composers. And I wondered why isn't she maybe on this compilation or on this label? And um, yeah, and then I thought, why not do it myself? Just try it. I just thought, why not try it? I have my distribution anyway. Um, and then, yeah, I contacted um, nine women or eight women because the ninth one was me, myself, for the contacted first company. Well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're very good at answering your own emails. <laughs> yes. yes. And um, yeah, uh, asked them if they would like to participate in this compilation and, and, and all said immediately, yes, sure, great idea. Um, really to good. have this have this um, label and the compilation focused on yeah, more experimental electronic female music. And I really have some some of my favorite um, artists on there, like uh, for example. Arushi Jain, Jain. Yeah. I don't know if I pronounce it properly. She is crazy good. She does. I don't know. Do you know her? It, it's a beautiful album, the connected one. I just kind of listened to it. It's very coherent because you can listen to the whole. So I've listened to the whole stream. And actually, I'm, I'm sorry to say, I don't necessarily know exactly who's done which track. No worries. <laughs> but, uh, but it's all beautiful. It's really good. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Arushi Jain, she. Um, She's uh, she's she comes from India, and uh, she does actually the music from her home interpreted with modular synthesizers. Mm. And that sounds so intriguing, different, cool, still, and really love her style. And she she gets featured everywhere: Ableton, Accelerator, I don't know, Fact Magazine, and so on and so on. She's amazing. And for example, also Helen Fogel Singer from France. Yeah. Her, uh, what she does is she um, she makes beautiful videos. She is looking for play abandoned places somewhere in her area. And then she drives there like uh, one of her videos was in an abandoned castle, you know, like ruins of a yeah. castle. And then she puts there her modular, patches it, and um, her partner does the video of her playing the piece then there, or she was in a, uh, yeah, many very, very cool buildings, ruins yeah. everywhere, tags and stuff, and just cra crazy good. And she was also on the, on the compilation. Then, then also like Julia Bonda, she is part of Endorphins, like the modular co company and so on and so on. It's, Really, really cool. I'm so happy with the compilation, and I'm also working on the second one cool. already. That's and great. have and have the next release after my album now. Also, it, it's a modular ambient artist from LA. She's called Margaret Blue, and uh -huh. has a fantastic album waiting to get uh, to to get released soon. Very nice. She's called Margaret Blue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> a, what a, a coincidence <laughs> she's really her, her middle name is blue that's, wow, that's so crazy. cool i, I we, envy her a little bit <laughs> if you want to get on your label we'll be renaming themselves with, with blue <laughs> words like blue teal turquoise maybe <laughs> maybe <laughs> okay cool um what else do i want to ask you about one thing do you uh, like I find when just because you know we listen to lots of music all the time whenever I listen to something that I like I my brain sort of this is me being foolish but my brain kind of starts thinking oh how could I create something like that and you sort of get attached to things that you hear and so I find that there's there's, there's something curious about like what you aim for because you, you don't actually want to sound like somebody else because the good thing is to sound like you uh but at the same time there's quite a draw to like oh it'd be great if i could do a thing like that or a thing like that and you get drawn towards other things how do you sort of navigate that do you do you deliberately avoid sounding like other people that you admire or do you sometimes try to make things that sound like people you admire or do you, do you got any thoughts about that one 
Absolutely. I think that's it's the most normal thing, especially when when you start out as an artist to that you have like idols, uh, musical yeah. idols, and you want to sound like them. When I started out, I wanted to sound like Massive Attack, Mezzanine. Most, yeah. as this, I don't know how many times I listened to that album. She's 5,000 times, definitely. <laughs> And yeah, it was very, it was way darker when I started out making music for my taste. And then I gradually moved away from that. And yeah, actually wanted to, yeah, like everybody says, you should sound like yourself. But but when you listen to that, it always makes so much sense. But what the hell is me? <laughs> what, yeah. what does it mean? Hmm. Uh, because you always you're always influenced by other artists and i think that's also normal it, it just it makes yeah it, it just influences your music so um so mostly i like um i know for example bonobo i love him i love mm. his beats for example and he uses many toy instruments as well and i also um like doing that but i also know by now if even if i try to make a very similar song it will sound totally different it will totally sound by now like me but maybe that's also because i'm now doing s s music so many years now and now uh, know how to make it my style yeah but um yeah i think i don't know it's also yeah like even like how you're um what you're wearing you see other people and you like that and then you you buy a similar i don't know uh shoes or something like that it's it's, it's just part of being human yeah somehow yeah. yeah and on the one hand it as you say there's that that drive to find your own voice and to be distinctive and of course you want to be distinctive and not sound like everybody else but at the same time everything does already always build on everything else that came before anyway doesn't it so it's always going exactly. to be exactly a, oh. a bit of both yeah and then maybe maybe even like uh, the longer you make music you know what what your sound is yeah i also i don't know like two or three years ago someone said to me ah oh, that sounds so like panic and i was what is that <laughs> i didn't <laughs> i don't know and by now, yeah, you, you get to use, um, to know yourself yeah. better and better over the years. And it's just, I guess, practice and uh, being patient with oneself and just keep on doing that. And then you, you realize what makes your sound your sound like. I really love um, having drums a little bit sometimes into the hip hop direction. Mm -hmm with heavy drums on and percussion. I love percussion, um, adding those or by now um, also like noisy instruments, 8-bit style mm -hmm. cassette tapes and, and stuff like that. Maybe it's something different in five years, but um, I think it's all, always also the dreamy, dreamy vibe I add yeah. to it. How do you keep going? Do you ever face you know feeling like oh i can't really do this anymore or do i have to make some more music now <laughs> or, or, do you, or do you lose confidence or you are you just always making making and i'm usually mostly making uh -huh. because as a when i when i was about 20 years old i had one year where i forced myself every day really every day to make music and uh -huh. that was a quite that was quite hard but i wanted to do that i had wanted to have the discipline I wanted to make music and make good music. And I knew if I wouldn't practice regularly and establish a routine, mm. I wouldn't make it. And then instead of, yeah, I really um, missed out also on something like some, some things like uh, going out sometimes when I didn't have uh, time elsewhere in the day, only in the evening and so on. And yeah. And then I had, also to find out what inspires me, what drives me then to make music. And that was also not always easy to find. But for example, when I, now I know when I'm tired in a bad mood, something like that, uh, just would rather watch TV or something like that. 
then I start off with very, very easy tasks. Like uh -huh. um, I recorded a vocal and maybe just um, edit out like those mouth noises or something like that. Or um, I don't know, the easiest thing that I can uh, imagine in that yeah. moment. Then I mm. start off with that. And usually starting is the hardest yeah. part. Yeah. And then when I started, usually I get creative after all and um, all is good. But yeah, the starting point is always very critical. And uh, yeah, when I just just start with the easiest thing, that makes it way, way better for me, yeah. for example. Yeah, and, that's good advice. Um, and then with... Um, Yeah, and then I since that year, I guess I have this routine, and it's I don't know, it's like brushing my teeth in the more. It's it's I don't um, I don't ask myself, do I want to do it? I just do it. I just sit there, and I have so many instruments here, the internet. I don't know, field recordings, millions yeah. of sounds out there, millions of kicks, millions of samples, whatever you want to use. So. Um, Or make yeah. a soundtrack to a to a movie you like, or or a, a picture, a painting, whatever inspires you. So I think there is always something something that would get one going. Advice to your former self. So, like you at the point when you're starting out, like 15 years ago, say something like that. Is there any advice if you could go back in time and tell yourself something? Is there any advice you would give to yourself? That's a good question. Hmm. I don't know. I think I, especially that year when I when I uh, forced myself to do music every day, that was so important to me. Yeah, that was a great idea uh, for my complete. From then, for my career, if you want to call it like that. Um, yeah, stick to that. <laughs> Uh -huh. uh, and uh, yeah, I think that was really, really important. And being curious about technology, not having fear of technology. Mm. I always was very curious and loved it. Uh, always felt like in a sci-fi movie mm. uh, when having all my devices or plugins or DAW or whatever. Always found, found that very fascinating. So, but I, I think I would always give that advice to establish a routine i think that's uh -huh. very important to not not always like like making sports if you ask every day yourself do i want to do that you won't do it for long mm. um or do i want to do whatever just doing it without thinking about it i think that's yeah. very important uh -huh. yeah that sounds good um about because we were talking about deliberately choosing things that might be visual when we we're talking about doing the thing with the saw and all of that and in terms of getting your work on the one hand making music because you want to make music that's something that's what you do that's great but then there's also the whole side of getting it noticed and getting people to actually pay attention to it which you've been putting effort into with instagram youtube things like that uh Have you got any advice about what has worked or what has not worked? Or is there anything that seems like a waste of time or things that you would... And what are your thoughts about how you... For anybody that's interested in learning from you about how to get stuff noticed and out there? Yeah, Outside. maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I think one of the most important things is to get your own style, like with music, somehow to find something that is fun to you that you really enjoy doing i love doing those flat lays so much and um something that maybe maybe no one is doing or not so many are doing mm. and that yeah it's just fun to you and also being um how do you say consistent like not doing this one week and then yeah. changing it For another week and then changing 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 it again so to, to be a bit patient also to because i love for example profiles on instagram where i go to their site and there's just one um style all uh -huh. over when you swipe yeah. up all those posts like there are some tape loop artists that i really yeah. love and you just look at all those posts and videos or, or photos 
they have all the same style. That's yeah. just beautiful to look at. Um, so that's, I think, very important to have a consistent style, unique to yourself, and stick to it for a while, not just changing it over again every month or so, because those things need time just to develop for oneself. Yeah to get better at it and also for the people to see, Oh, okay. She does it more often now. It's cool. I want to see more of that. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that. Yeah, for sure. That was really good. Thank you. Um, okay. Thank you so much for joining us. And this is really great to talk to you. I love all your work. And it's really nice to hang out for a little bit and talk about this stuff. Yeah. It was very much fun. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Cool. That's good. Thank you.